Hi, this is Santiago Bricas Gerson from Oracle. This is a follow-up screencast to the one in which I described the video sharing application. Today, I'd like to share with you a similar type of collaboration application, but this time one that uses other HTML5 features, namely 2D canvases and SQL databases. The name of this application is BoardMirror. Rather than sharing a video object like in the previous demo, BoardMirror shares a canvas object and lets participants draw figures on it. For the sake of simplicity, only two figures can be drawn on a canvas, rectangles, and circles. These figures are drawn in a random location inside the canvas and using a random color also to simplify the user interface. Let's have a look at how the application works. So here we have a uh, window from Safari at the top and then a different window from Chromium. They're both uh, pointing to the same URL. And what you see here in this empty space is a canvas object. And what we're going to show now is how we can draw figures on that canvas object and how the figures are going to be mirrored into the other canvas object. So let's see how that works. We uh, click the uh, rectangle button. Maybe we click it a few more times. We can add some circles also. And as you can see, the figures are not only drawn in the local canvas, but they're also drawn in the other canvas running in a different browser. What's happening here is that we're using a WebSockets connection to remote this event, the event of drawing a figure, and we exchange all the information that is necessary to draw the figure on the other canvas, namely the location of the figure, the color, and the type of figure. We can also um, maybe clear the canvas, start all over again. Uh, we can do that from the bottom. Uh, window as well. We can add some rectangles, add some more circles. And this simply shows the uh, ability of WebSockets to have an always-on connection where we can send any type of data with a very low latency. In addition to WebSockets, the Board Mirror application has the ability to store your work of art in a local SQL database inside the browser. This is done using one of the new APIs in HTML5. In fact, HTML5 has two new options for storing data on the client side. These are web storage and web SQL databases. The former is implemented by most browsers and it can basically store name value pairs. The latter, on the other hand, gives you full SQL storage, but unfortunately it isn't as widely available. In the Board Mirror application, uh, we're using the SQL databases since they are both uh, supported under Safari and Chromium. So let's take a look at how that works. Uh, let's say that uh, we like what we have here, or maybe we want to add a few more circles and a few more rectangles, and we can click the Save button. And we get a window from Safari indicating that the uh, canvas has been stored in a local database. And perhaps what we can do now is we can clear the canvas, maybe draw some more circles and a few more rectangles and do the same in Chromium. So let's click Save. Now we get a, another window indicating that this was saved. Now inside a different browser, this time it's Chromium and not Safari. So let's see what happens if we now do a clear and we load whatever is stored in the database. Since we're clicking the button inside the Safari window, we're going to get whatever is stored inside the Safari browser. Now if we do the same over here and say clear, and then load again, as you can see, now we're getting whatever is, was stored in the Chromium database. So let's have a look at the uh, source code that is running in the browser. We have a function that returns our database object. The database object has a number of methods to initialize, to load from the database, and also to save into the database. The very first thing we do is we open the database uh, that is running inside the browser, and we attempt to create a table for storing the shapes. The shapes are going to be stored in a serialized JSON format, which is the same format we're using for exchanging these shapes through a WebSockets connection. Uh, if the table already exists, uh, there's going to be an error here that in this particular case we're ignoring, so we're essentially moving on and just to make the code a little bit simpler. Um, what happens when we attempt to load um, the canvas? What we do is we create a transaction that runs a select statement. As I said before, this is uh, pure SQL. Um, and then we provide a callback for handling the results. 
Uh, you can see the callback here. And what we do is for every shape that we get out of the database, we are going to parse that shape and we're going to update a data structure in our application object indicating that this is a new shape that needs to be uh, drawn in our canvas. And once that is completed, we can go ahead and refresh the canvas. The uh, save operation is very similar. What we do initially is um, we delete everything from the database and then we insert one by one all the shapes that we have stored in our data structure from here. Um, as you can see, this looks very much like uh, JDBC. Um, we have a SQL, an SQL statement uh, in quotes, and we have parameters that we can specify. In this case, it would be the shape ID and then the actual serialization of the shape. Um, we also have another function that deals with the WebSocket connection. Uh, this is actually identical to the one shown in the previous demo. We have a URL that starts with WS colon to indicate this is a WebSocket endpoint. Uh, we create a WebSocket based on that URL and then we register callbacks for the different uh, events that we're interested in, uh, in handling. In particular, for the on-message event, what we do is we uh, parse the data. Um, remember, this is going to be a shape. There's a special type of shape that we call clear that we use to clear the uh, canvas, as you've seen before. So depending on the type of shape, we either mirror the shape, which means essentially draw the shape in the canvas, or we clear the canvas if it's a special type of clear shape. So finally, let's take a look at the actual application object where the canvas is used. So we have a um, get canvas method that simply gets a uh, reference to our canvas object. And then we have a number of different methods to either draw a figure locally or mirror a figure that we received remotely. So let's take a look at one of those. For example, say mirror rectangle. If we're going to mirror a rectangle, what we do is we get a reference to a canvas. From the canvas, we can get the 2D context on which we can draw. And then simply we use um, API calls that are part of HTML5 to draw the figure on the canvas in the right color and so on. Um, and finally, depending on whether we read the uh, figure from the database or from the network, uh, we decide what to do with it. All the other methods are very similar. Uh, for example, draw a rectangle um, here. The only difference is that we have to um, obtain random numbers for the location of the shapes and so on. And then the other difference is that once we complete drawing the rectangle, we want to send that rectangle um, over the WebSockets connection. And we do that over here. We basically create a new shape and then serialize the shape and send it through the network. And the last step we do is we store the shape in our local data structure so that we know what to store in the database when the user clicks save. So let's have a look at the server-side component of the board mirror application. We have a board mirror application class that extends the WebSocket application. It overrides uh, two methods, createSocket and onMessage. The createSocket method is going to be invoked every time a new uh, client connects to the WebSocket endpoint. And the onMessage method is, is a callback that is going to be invoked every time a new data frame is received in one of these WebSockets. So this is identical to what we've seen in the video sharing application. In the case of the onMessage, what we do is we extract the data out of the payload and then broadcast that data to all the other WebSockets in the session. Our board mirror WebSocket class is nothing special, just extends a base server WebSocket. And finally, the uh, WebSocket servlet class that uh, we have in our application is simply used to register this application in the WebSocket engine. And that concludes the uh, presentation of the board mirror application. Thank you very much for listening.